fundraising for the ghost is provided from an Instagram account called Bear Knots. The owner, the person's name is Kinsey, allowed me to make a video on a tutorial for this ghost and gave me permission to do this. So thank you, Kinsey, so, so much. They created a beautiful pattern. If you want the written version of it, you have to go onto their Instagram profile, which I will link down below. And yeah, that's how you're going to get the pattern if you want the written version for this. Let's go ahead and get started with the materials. So I'm going to be using a blue yarn for this tutorial just because the background is white and I want you guys to be able to see the stitches that I'm doing. If I used a white yarn, then <laughs> you, you won't be able to see anything that I'm doing. And I'm using a weight for medium yarn and I'm using a four millimeter hook to go with it. Now I do really suggest like as you can see in this clip here, I use a plush yarn for the ghosts and they turn out really cute as plushies. So if you use any other type of yarn, just make sure you're using the corresponding hook size for that specific yarn. I'm also gonna be using my crafting scissors, a darning needle, cause we're gonna need to sew some things. I have a stitch marker and I have safety eyes. So again, this will kind of vary the size that you need for safety eyes, depending on what size yarn you use. With a weight four yarn and a four millimeter hook, I find that eight millimeter safety eyes work well and I'll link all of these materials down below. Also off camera that I cannot fit here is polyfill. So we're gonna need polyfill or teddy bear stuffing. Also a thin, preferably weight three pink yarn and a weight three black yarn to add the blush and smile details. But other than that, we can get started. We're gonna start with doing a magic circle. And to do a magic circle, I have a detailed description that I posted on my Crochet 101 video. I'll link that below as well. There's gonna be a lot of stuff linked down below in this video, but I'll show you how to do it quickly here. So I'm gonna take my two fingers and the yarn color that I'm choosing to work with and grab a hold of that yarn. I'm gonna wrap it around to the side with my nails and create a cross or a little X. So on the side with your nails, there should be an X and the side without your nails, there should be parallel yarn lines. Flip your side over to the X and we're gonna insert our crochet hook under this piece of yarn, grab this piece of yarn and pull through and twist just like that. Again, I'm only going fast just because I have a tutorial for this on my page. Um, so if you need a little more practice, then go for that. To secure the magic circle, I'm going to yarn over and pull through the loop on my hook. And that's how we create the magic circle. I'm just gonna untangle this part here and perfect. Now I have my stitch marker close by because we're gonna be doing working in the rounds for this pattern. And we're gonna start by doing six single crochets into the magic circle. To do a single crochet into the magic circle, I'm going to insert my hook into that circle, grab the yarn and pull through the circle. So I have two loops on my hook. I'm gonna grab the yarn, pull through both of those loops on my hook. And that's how we make a single crochet. So that is our first single crochet. I'm gonna go ahead, grab my stitch marker and mark that stitch. I'll take out my hook so you can see, just going over that first stitch that we made. And I'll secure that, put my hook back into the yarn and we'll start doing the other single crochets. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the circle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. Insert into the circle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. So now we have one, two, three. We're gonna do this three more times. That's our fourth single crochet. That's our fifth single crochet. And that's our sixth single crochet. So if you lose track of counting your single crochets, what you can do is count the stitch from the stitch marker. So we have our first stitch here, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. To close our magic circle, we're taking this loose tail end here and pulling it tight. Make sure to pull it tight and as soon as it's tight to stop because if you pull your yarn too hard, it can sometimes snap. And now we're gonna be starting our second round. So I'm gonna take this out and remember what stitch we took it out of. So this is our first stitch of the round. That's round one. For round two, we're gonna be doing an increase in every stitch. So to do an increase, I'm going into this top part of that first stitch. See how my hook goes into the entire top part of that stitch? So our hook is in, we're gonna yarn over, grab the yarn, pull through that loop. We have two loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over and pull through both of those loops. I'm gonna take my stitch marker and I'm gonna mark this first stitch because that shows us this is the first stitch of the second round. Now to do an increase, we wanna go back into that stitch we just placed a single crochet in because an increase is two of the same stitches into the same stitch. It sounds confusing, but I'll show you here. So we just put 
a single crochet into the stitch we're going to insert our hook back into that stitch like so yarn over pull through yarn over pull through both loops on the hook so we have two single crochets in the same stitch let's do this all the way around so we're going into this next stitch here inserting our hook into the entire top part yarning over pulling through yarning over pulling through both loops on the hook now we go back into that same stitch and place another single crochet so yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two perfect now we're going into the next stitch place our hook in there yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two go back into that same stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two so two single crochets in each stitch let's do this again so we're going to place two single crochets into this next stitch and then two single crochets into the next stitch and two single crochets into the next stitch by the end of this round you should have 12 stitches in total so let's count to see if we did this right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. That stitch with the stitch marker. And that's the end of round two. For round three, the pattern is going to be increase and then single crochet. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker because we want to go back into this stitch. So go into that first stitch like we've been doing to start each round. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. I'm taking my stitch marker again. And I'm going to mark that first stitch that we just did to make sure that we know this is the start of round three. Now I'm going to go back into that stitch to create that increase that we just practiced so much. So I'm going back into that same stitch and I'm going to place another single crochet. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops on that hook. Now we're going to be going into the next stitch, but we're only going to be placing one single crochet. So let's go into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over pull through two and that's our single crochet into the next stitch we're going to do an increase so insert your hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two then go back into that same stitch because we're doing an increase yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two into the next stitch a single crochet and then into the next stitch an increase so two single crochets into that same stitch. Into the next stitch, a single crochet. Into the next stitch, two single crochets. So an increase. And we're gonna keep doing this all the way around until we get to the last stitch. So into the next stitch, we're doing a single crochet. And into the next stitch, an increase. Next stitch, single crochet. And we're doing our last increase in single crochet here. So we're going into this next stitch, placing an increase, go back into that stitch, place another single crochet. And into the last stitch, a single crochet. So you should be ending with a single crochet for round three. By the end of round three, you should have 18 stitches and you can go ahead and count if you think that you did that round wrong to make sure that you have 18 stitches. For round four, we're gonna be doing the pattern increase and then single crochet two. So I took out that stitch marker and I'm gonna be putting my hook into that first stitch, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through both loops on my hook. This is our first stitch of round four. So let's mark it with our stitch marker. And we're gonna be doing an increase. So let's go back into that same stitch, back into that same stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two to make that increase now into the next stitch this next stitch right here I'm gonna place my hook in there and do a single crochet and then into the next stitch so we're not we're not doing an increase into this next stitch here insert your hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through both loops on the hook so we did increase single crochet single crochet let's repeat this pattern all the way around into the next stitch we're going to be placing an increase into the next stitch one single crochet and then into the next stitch one single crochet into the next stitch an increase so two single crochets into that same stitch into the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch 
single crochet into the next stitch increase into the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch single crochet and let's repeat this all the way around until we get to the last stitch so i'm doing my last two single crochets here so into this stitch single crochet and then into the next stitch single crochet round four is done by the end of round four you should have 24 stitches so go ahead and count those if you feel the need to and we're going to be starting rounds five to eight so the next rounds five six seven and eight are all going to be the same and i'll show you what i mean here so we're going to take out the stitch marker we're going to begin round five and we're just going to place a single crochet into this first stitch just one let's mark this stitch with a stitch marker perfect and now into the next stitch a single crochet so we're not doing any more increases for these next couple of rounds we're simply just putting a single crochet into every stitch into the next stitch i'm going to place a single crochet into the next stitch a single crochet into the next stitch single crochet and i'm sure you get the pattern by now just keep going into the next stitch and placing single crochets all around for rows five six seven and eight and this is going to really form the body of the ghost take your time practice the single crochet and by the end of the rows i'll meet you back here so keep doing this over and over i'm finishing up my last couple of stitches for round eight so this is my last single crochet here and we know that because the stitch marker is here as well I'm gonna show you how to count if you ever lose track of the rounds you're doing you can just count each layer so we have one two three four five six seven and eight I recommend going to the side where you have your working yarn and then also counting down as well for round nine we're gonna be adding the arms of the ghost the little tiny bobble stitch arms and I'll teach you how to do the bobble stitch so I'm gonna take out this stitch marker here and we're gonna first start with single crochets. So let's put our hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two for our first single crochet of round nine. I'm gonna mark this with my stitch marker here, that first stitch that I just made. And we're gonna do four more single crochets, so five single crochets. This was our first one, go into that next stitch. This is our second one, into that next stitch. Third one, into the next stitch four and into the next stitch five so those are our five single crochets and into this next stitch here this next stitch here we're going to be doing a bobble stitch this we're going to yarn over get that yarn prepped on your hook and go into this next stitch where we're going to insert the bobble stitch put your hook through yarn over pull through yarn over pull through the first two loops on your hook so you're going to have two loops left on your hook we're gonna yarn over again, go back into that same stitch, put your hook through, yarn over, pull through, and we have four loops on our hook now. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops on that hook. So now we have three on our hook. We're gonna yarn over again, go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through. We now have five loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two on those hook. So now we have four left on our hook. And we're gonna yarn over one more time, go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook. So let me spread these out so you can see that we have six loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two on that hook. Or five, now we have five loops on our hook. Yarn over pull through all of those loops and if you push it out it creates kind of like this cute little bobble and that's why we call it the bobble stitch for the next part of this round we're going to be doing single crochets in the next eight stitches and i want you to be aware sometimes when we're doing bobble stitches it can cover up the next stitch so just make sure to pull that back so you're not covering your next stitch here because we want the stitch count to be correct when we're doing amigurumi because it helps with placing the facial features in the safety eyes and yada 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 you just it just it's just good to have the correct stitch count so we're going to go into this next stitch here and we're going to do nothing fancy just a plain old single crochet 
that's our first one. We're gonna do seven more of these. So into that next stitch, we're doing a single crochet. That's two. Into the next stitch, single crochet. Next stitch, single crochet. So we have four now. Let's do our fifth one. Six, seven, eight. So that's our eight single crochets. And we're gonna do another bobble stitch into this next stitch here. So to do the bobble stitch, let's go over it again together. We're gonna yarn over, put our hook into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two of those loops that are on the front of that hook. Yarn over again, go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through. We have four loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops on the hook. Yarn over again, go back into that same stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. We have five loops on the hook now. Yarn over and pull through the first two. Now we have four loops on the hook, yarn over one more time. We're going back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through. We have six loops on the hook now. Yarn over, pull through two of those loops. One, two, three, four, five loops on the hook now. Yarn over, pull through all five of those. Really take your time with the bobble stitch. And we have nine stitches left of round nine. I'm just gonna put this magic circle end tucked in. And we're just gonna be doing single crochets in the remaining stitches. So remember to kind of pull your bobble stitch back so you're not covering the next stitch. Into the next stitch, we're gonna place a single crochet with our squeaky hook. Oh my gosh, like biggest pet peeve. <laughs> and we're just gonna place single crochets in all the remaining stitches. So you're gonna have a total of nine single crochets in this next part. Just going all around. And the last single crochet of round nine. You can see we're kind of getting a little ghost to form. Yay, I'm so excited. So for rounds 10 and 11, it's kind of gonna be like what we did with rounds five, six, seven, and eight. We're just doing single crochets all around. And I'll show you for this round because it can be kind of confusing with the bobble stitch. So we're just taking out that stitch marker, placing a single crochet and marking it with the stitch marker. And super simple, we're just gonna go into that next stitch, single crochet, next stitch, single crochet, next stitch, single crochet, and all around. Now for the bobble stitch, it's a slightly bigger stitch, if you can see, than all the other <laughs> single crochets that we've done. So just make sure that you are not placing two single crochets into there. Let's go into the next one, because it is slightly bigger than the rest of the stitches from the last round. So I'm going around. This is round 10, so single crochet all around. And I'm doing my last single crochet of round 10. Now for round 11, we're gonna be doing the exact same thing. So I'm taking out my stitch marker, placing a single crochet. I'm gonna mark that first stitch. And I'm gonna continue again doing single crochets in every stitch. All right, so I just finished round 11. I'm be placing the safety eyes. I always find it's easier to place the safety eyes before we stuff and close off the round. I'm gonna show you how to do this. I just took out my hook, you can keep it in. And we're gonna be grabbing the safety eyes that correspond to the yarn size that you're using. So for the weight four medium, I'm using eight millimeter safety eyes. Again, I got these on Amazon and I will link them down below. But for the safety eyes, we're gonna be placing them between round six and seven, four stitches apart. So I'm gonna show you what that means. I'm going to count first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and this is the seventh. So this is the middle of round six and seven, which is where we are going to be placing our safety eyes. So I'm just grabbing the eyeball part of the safety eyes. I'm gonna be placing it about two stitches away from that bobble stitch. I find that that looks best for this project. So placing it two stitches away, if you put your hook directly aligned with the bobble stitch, one, two. So that's perfect and then obviously we want it to line up on the other side so make sure you are putting that in the right area and i'm just going to be inserting it through the yarn so this is what it's going to look like on the inside you have one stitch two stitch here so two stitches away from the bobble stitch i find always looks the best so our eyes are in place and i'm just going to flip this inside out and use 
the backing of our safety eyes and attaching it on and you should hear it click into place perfectly like that. Same thing with the other safety eye. So we're putting that in and hearing that click. So now the safety eyes are secured. While we are still having the plushie unstuffed and not fastened off, we're gonna sew on the blush and the smile. So I'll show you how to do this. Grabbing my pink yarn that I'm using for the blush and I'm putting it through the darning or sewing needle, whichever you call it. And we're gonna go from the inside. So go in the inside of your amigurumi and from the stitch that's directly under the eyes, like so. I mean, you can play around with the placement. I find this works best. I'm gonna stick the darning needle through and pull through just a, you know a medium length of a tail for the yarn and I'm gonna go directly across about I think this is I believe this is about two stitches worth of blush here that I find looks best and of course my colors look crazy this looks like a cotton candy ghost <laughs> I'm gonna do the exact same thing so I'm going to that stitch below the eye and I'm going to pull it like not too tight because you don't want to pull it too tight if you do it's gonna like make it longer and everything and then I'm going to go back to this stitch here pull through to create the cute little blush features taking the working yarn of the pink make sure we still have your ghost body color do not cut that off yet because we're still working on the ghost body obviously we're not going to leave them like this but so i just cut that pink yarn and as you can see i have a really long tail end what i do is i just loosely tie a knot into the ghost like so i just do a loose double knot again if you pull it too tight it's going to make the blush kind of sink into the plushie which we don't want and then i just take scissors and snip off the excess yarn. Now we have the cute little blush for the ghost. For the smile, I'm taking a strand of black thread. I'm just keeping it a bit on the longer side. I'll be taking this here and you can tie the knot here to secure the darning needle. I find when you give it a little bit of pull room though, you don't really need it, um, but do whatever you feel comfortable with. And now we're going to make the smile. Going into the ghost and putting my sewing needle through and we're just going to pull through. I like to do a longer end again because it gives you more wiggle room <laughs> if you mess up. And then into the stitch right beside the eye, directly across from it, I'm going to insert the hook or the sewing needle back in to create a little line like this. <laughs> it kind of... <laughs> I've never realized how kind of like dumb they look like this. It looks like a little derpy ghost. It looks like its name would be Merp. Oh my gosh, I love it. Anyways, enough fooling around. So um, if you can see the middle of this line here, there's a stitch directly under it like this. I'm going to be going into that stitch through the back part. So inside the ghost as well. And just trying to find that stitch and pull this through. Now to make kind of the pointed smile, you are going to want to grab this yarn and pull it down, go back into that area that you just pulled the darning needle out of and bring it back down. This is kind of gonna grab a hold of the yarn and create a tiny smile like that. If you pull any ends of each piece of the black yarn, it's gonna tighten it, adjust it to your liking, but you can also loosen it like this if you pull it too tight. And loosen it like that. I like this type of smile. And to get rid of this yarn here, I'm gonna take the black yarn. Don't cut the working yarn that <laughs> we're using for the ghost body. We're gonna do the exact same thing that we did with the blush and just do a loose but secure knot. There we go. So I'm just cutting these away. Yeah, so we got our little facial features on. Now we can continue the round. We're starting round 12. So I'm putting my hook back into that piece of yarn. And for round 12, we're working in the back loops only. This can be a little bit confusing, especially if you're a beginner. So I'm gonna go slow. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker here to start round 12. And if you can see, we kind of have two loops that make up the stitch. We have this back loop here and this front loop here. I know this is the back loop because it's the one closest to the middle center part. 
I'm gonna be putting my hook into this back loop only. That's what the term back loop only means. And we're gonna be doing a single crochet. So let's single crochet as normal into that back loop and mark this stitch. And the pattern is gonna be single crochet two, so one, two, and then decrease. So into this next stitch here, into the back loop, not into the front loop, the back loop, we're gonna place a single crochet. Now we're gonna be doing a decrease. Into the next stitch, we're gonna be going into the back loop. Put that loop on your hook. Now into the next stitch, put your hook into that back loop as well. So we have both of those back loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through those first two loops, yarn over, pull through the next two loops. This is called a decrease. And it's a little bit tricky because it's a back loop only decrease. So I'm gonna show you how we do this again. So we're gonna go into this back loop. Back loop here, place a single crochet because we're starting the pattern. Single crochet again into the next back loop. And now we're going to go into this back loop, then go into the next back loop, yarn over, pull through the two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook. Now we're going to single crochet two, so into that back loop, single crochet, into the back loop, single crochet. Now we're gonna do the decrease, so go into that back loop here, then go into the next stitch, find that back loop, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two. Single crochet into that next back loop, single crochet into the next back loop, and do a decrease. So find that next back loop, next back loop, yarn over, pull through two, accidentally pulled through three, don't do that. <laughs> and then yarn over, pull through the next two. Continue this pattern all around. So we're gonna single crochet, single crochet, again, all working into the back loop, and then the decrease. be doing our decrease. So decrease is essentially making two stitches into one stitch and it closes off our round. For round 12 you should end with 18 stitches so give it a count if you need to. And we're gonna start round 13. So the pattern for round 13 is single crochet and then decrease. But we're not doing anything fancy. We're gonna be working into the entire part of the stitch. So that entire top part. Place a single crochet and mark this single crochet. Perfect. Now we're going to be doing a decrease. So a decrease is kind of similar. We're going into this front loop. So now into the front loop of the next stitch and then into that next stitch, go into that front loop as well. Yarn over, pull through those two loops, yarn over, pull through the next two loops. So into that next stitch here, we're going to go into the entire stitch, do a single crochet. And then for the decrease, we're going into the front loop of that next stitch and then the next stitch also going into that front loop yarning over pulling through two yarning over pulling through the next two into that next full stitch single crochet into the next front loop and the next front loop we're doing the decrease to that full stitch single crochet into the next front loop into to the next front loop Oops, let's do that one more time. Pull through the first two, pull through the next two. Just continue this all the way around. So that's how we do the single crochet and decrease for that round. Before we do the last round, I'm going to take my polyfill and we're gonna stuff the ghost. Now you can stuff it to your liking. Not too much because we still want to work into the next couple of rounds, but just enough to give the ghost some shape. We're gonna continue with the last round and the last round is just decreasing all around. We're gonna end up with six stitches. So let's take out the stitch marker here and we're gonna be doing a decrease. 
going into that stitch, the front loop, because we're doing a decrease, and then going into the next stitch, front loop, yarn over, pull through the next two loops on the hook, and then yarn over, pull through the last two loops on the hook. And we're doing this decrease pattern all the way around. So into the next stitch, we're going into that front loop, then into the next stitch, the front loop, yarn over, pull through the two, yarn over, pull through the next two. To the next stitch, front loop, to the next stitch, front loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Into the next stitch, front loop, next stitch, front loop, yarn over, pull through two, and continue this until the last two stitches, which are here. So we go into the front loop, go into the next front loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. But we're finally done doing all the rounds. So I'm just going to cut a long tail end on my ghost and we can do a fasten off. So slip your hook back into that little loop and just pull the yarn through, easy as that. I like to give it a little bit of a tighten and I'm gonna take out my stitch marker. Let's continue stuffing it because if you remember before we didn't stuff it fully. I'm gonna take a little bit because I don't think this will require too much. It's gonna be hard to kind of get it through the smaller opening that we have here. So I'm gonna stuff the ghost just until it is the desired plumpness that I like. I think that's good. It's a nice squishy ghost. So to close off this round, because we still have six stitches that are left over here and we do not want to leave this open, I'm going to grab our darning needle again and thread the long tail end through the long tail end that's attached to the ghost. And we're going to be doing this sewing pattern. It's fairly simple. You have your stitch here and I'm going in from the opening part of it, going outwards and pulling through into the next stitch. I'm going to be going from the outside in, pull that through, then going into the next stitch here. We're going outwards into the next stitch here, going inwards, and it's just kind of this like crisscross motion to close up the center because when we pull it at the end it's going to close so this is my last one here and i'm going to go out through here and then if you just pull this tail end it shuts the opening perfectly to tuck this in i'm going to just do a few kind of just like how you would regularly weave in ends i usually just do a whole bunch of like <laughs> little random areas that I insert the sewing needle and then I just poke it through a random part of the amigurumi. The stuffing is going to keep that yarn in place and snip off that loose end. We're going to finish off with the ruffle parts. Now for the ruffle parts we're going to be working. Do you remember when we did the front, the back loops only? and it left us with the front loops. So we're gonna be working in these front loops here. If you take the side of the ghost with the face and turn it away from you, you should see that there's these kind of, this little area here where the front loops, there's like one a little bit missing over here, but it's actually just down here. Looks like they're kind of disconnected. We're gonna start here. So I'm taking my ghost, flipping him upside down, and we're gonna work into these front loops. So I'm taking, my hook and I'm inserting through this front loop and take my blue yarn again or the white yarn whatever color you're using put it on my hook and pull through like this so that we have a little knot now we're going to attach this to the ghost I simply do it with a knot there's probably much better ways to do this but ever since I started crocheting this is how I've always just kind of done this part <laughs> so I don't mind doing it like this put your hook back into that front loop grab the yarn and pull through and it's going to pull up a loop on your hook so now we can get started i'm going to go into this next front loop this is the one that kind of has like the gap here just go into that front loop perfect and yarn over pull through yarn over pull through 
for a single crochet. Now you can mark this stitch with the stitch marker. That's our first single crochet. Into the next stitch here, that next front loop, I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through. I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. That was a half double crochet. We're gonna be doing three half double crochets into this stitch. So that was our first one. Let's do our second one. So yarn over, go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. We're gonna do that one more time. So yarn over into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Perfect like that. So that's the pattern, single crochet, three half double crochet, single crochet, three half double crochet. And we're gonna continue this all the way around these front loops here. So going into the next front loop, I'm gonna place a single crochet. And into the next front loop, so this one here, I'm gonna do a half double crochet. So I'm yarning over, inserting my hook, yarning over, pulling through, yarn over, pull through, go back into that stitch, place another half double crochet. And then the third half double crochet, yarn over, back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Into the next stitch, single crochet, that next front loop, and then into the next front loop, half double crochet, three times into that same stitch. Into that next stitch, single crochet, and then into the next stitch front loop, whatever you want to call it, three half double crochets and we're going to continue this all the way around. Now I'm just finishing up this front loop round. So I have my last two front loops. I'm going to do the single crochet and then into this last loop here, three half double crochets. To finish this off, I'm going to take out this stitch marker and into this stitch here that we just took the stitch marker out of, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, and then continue pulling through to create a slip stitch. I will cut a shorter tail end than the ones that we've been doing for now and just fasten off by pulling through. And to get rid of these loose ends here, I like to just go in with my hook and pull them through the ghost, kind of hide them like so. There's really no proper way to like hide amigurumi tail ends. I find I just weave them in through random parts of the ghost and I'm cutting off the excess. Just like that, we have a super cute little ghost. Now, this is with the acrylic yarn. You can use any yarn, but I really recommend you use plush yarn. Once you get the hang of it, if you need to practice, I recommend starting with acrylic yarn and then moving on to the blanket or plush yarn because it's just so cute. The little ruffles and, oh, it's so cute, it's so squishy. I guess we'll call him Merp because we called him Merp before, but <laughs> Merp the ghost. And thank you guys for making this along with me. I hope this tutorial helped you and happy spooky season.